So whenever the House of Zerzhov gets talked about, a few of the fragrances that come to people's minds are like Neo, Udin, Kobe, and so on. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at an underrated fragrance from the House of Zerzhov, and this one is called Lua, so stay tuned. Before I begin the video, I do want to give a very special thank you to Max Aroma. They are the paid sponsors of this video. I've been using them for many years. They have a ton of discounted designer and niche fragrances. They're located in Long Island City, New York, so just a few miles away from where I live. So whenever they send me a package, I get it in like two business days. I love it, and I've been using them again for many years, so I totally trust them. They also have 100% authentic products, and I'm going to take it a step further. I actually collaborated with them to bring you guys a coupon code. I'm not going to get any sort of commission sales or a kickback from this or anything, but the code is Redolescence. So if you use Redolescence, you can actually get 30% off Zerjoff Lua if you buy it from them in the next coming weeks or something like that. I don't know how long the code is going to be valid for, uh, but just to let you guys know, this fragrance retails for about 230 euros, $260 American. Max Aroma has it for $215. You take an additional 30% off of that, it's going to land you in the wheelhouse of like $150. So that's a really good price for a Zerjoff fragrance, if you ask me. So let's go ahead and get this video started. So this fragrance was released in 2009. This is actually the 10 year anniversary of Zerjoff Lua. The perfumer for this fragrance is Chris Maurice. Chris Maurice is actually a pseudonym. Uh, his real name is Chris Carbonell. He has a factory in Spain. And what I love about him, and I've smelled many of his fragrances, he's done some for Kajal and Mask Milano, is he really knows how to create these oriental types of fragrances, utilizing a lot of really natural ingredients that really speaks to my olfactory senses. And so the thing that piqued my interest about Zerjoff Lua is I noticed initially it contains some of my favorite floral notes. Now, I'm not a big floral guy, but I do like rose, I do like iris, I also kind of like lily of the valley, I don't like my lang lang or my narcissus or anything like that, unless it brings me in tropical territory. But the thing about this one is that it utilizes those floral notes, takes it in a natural direction, and I really like the interplay among the different notes that are utilized in here and it also kind of gives it like a sheeper feel. The thing about this fragrance is that it's, it was one of the original Shooting Stars fragrances along with Kobe and Neo and Udin and I know nowadays there's a ton of Shooting Stars fragrances, Cruz del Sur 1, Cruz del Sur 2, the list goes on. But the thing about this one, it's a bit of an underrated fragrance and it's a hidden gem from the collection. So I'm excited to be telling you a little bit more about this fragrance. Let's go ahead and start things off by taking a closer look at the amazing presentation. So when you purchase a Zerjoff, it comes in this faux leather box. The box opens up to reveal a number on the inside which tells you which batch you received. These flaps on the inside can be opened up to reveal a silhouette in which the bottle rests. So the inside of the box contains this pouch. The inside of the pouch contains a certificate of origin for a meteorite that is included in every purchase. And here it is. Wow. The bottle for this one is also quite gorgeous. It says Zerjoff in the neck of the atomizer, and the batch code can be located on the bottom of the back of the bottle. The cap for this one clicks into place very securely, so you can pick this one up from the cap. And here's the distribution. Let's continue with the smell. So as soon as this fragrance opens up, you are going to get that characteristic iris note that I spoke about before, but I must make a disclaimer here. This is not the iris that you will come to expect. If you're familiar with Dior Am um, by Christian Dior, you're not going to get that same kind of an iris because it's not a starchy iris. So for those of you who don't know, iris is one of those ingredients that kind of has a reputation of smelling like lipstick or a cosmetic bag or something like that. And there are some fragrances out there that do that really well. Dior Am um, and Dior Am um Intense are some examples. There's also one by Histoire de Parfum called Tuberose One Capricious. I think that that one kind of smells like lipstick as well. And there are some really starchy iris fragrances that I absolutely love. So for example, there is Masque Milano's La Tessa. There is also Liris de Fath by Jacques Fath. I think that that is a holy grail iris scent. And I was a little bummed out that the iris in here wasn't of the starchy variety. But once I noticed that interplay with the rose and the vanilla, I really started to open up to this one. So this is uh, a fragrance that my experience with actually 
actually goes back to 2011. I remember shopping at Min New York in New York City and really enjoying the entire Zerzhov brand. And Lua was always one that I wanted to purchase, but I ended up purchasing the Jala instead because that one was a little bit stronger with that orange blossom characteristic that it has. And I was wearing that one summers in and summers out. I put really good use to that one. I probably have a little bit left in my bottle. So if you look at the narrative that's associated with this fragrance, it's like you're on the French villa, you're standing on a balcony, it's nighttime, you're looking at the open water and the moon's reflection is in the water and it's a very sort of romanticized narrative and I do agree with it to a certain degree. Obviously, I've never been to France. I hope to visit one day. But the thing about this one is, yes, I do think it's appropriate for romantic settings because of the sensuality of the rose that's utilized in here. But I also think that this is really good for summer nights because that's the ideal season to wear this one. When the weather gets hot, one in the springtime because the florals are kind of invocative of the spring, but also in the summertime because I think it would really help this one with the performance. Now, there is a little bit of vanilla in the base that's done in a very natural, very sophisticated, an elegant kind of a way and so if a woman were to wear this one I could see her wearing this one in a really fancy formal and elegant dress and I can see a guy with a button down with the first couple buttons unbuttoned wearing this one very comfortably it's definitely a showstopper but it has this understated elegance about it so it doesn't shout it doesn't scream it doesn't choke you out and that's because the longevity on this one is about four to five hours the projection on this one is also not beast mode but it does give you a nice sort of sophisticated intimate bubble so never radiates beyond an arm's length it's about an elbow's length so once you get near to somebody you're definitely going to be able to smell this one on them the only other thing that I want to talk about is I know that this one does get compared to a couple other fragrances online uh, both of which were actually composed by Pierre Bourdon and they are Gianfranco Ferre Eau de Parfum and the second one is Iris Poudre by Frédéric Moll both of which were composed by you know Pierre Bourdon and my mother actually wore Gianfranco Ferre Eau de Parfum for many years and yes I do actually pick up on that connection and I've smelled Iris Pudra at Ades de Venustas in Soho in Manhattan or when they used to be in that sort of location and I do definitely get the comparison this one is not as pricey as the Frederick Mall but this one has a lot more natural elements than the Gianfranco Ferre which can be found in like the $50 range for like a 1.7 ounce if I'm not mistaken I did my research prior to shooting this video and it's in the pretty affordable range but you're not going to get an exact copy this one is definitely done with class and elegance there's a natural component about it that I really like the lily sort of cleans things up in there in the base there's a little bit of that mossy and musky quality coming through sort of putting it in uh, Shepra territory which I really enjoy all in all Lou is one that I'm gonna be wearing a lot this summer and I hope you have the chance to experience it soon let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment so first up in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell I'm having a hard time saying that this one is totally unique because it does get compared to Gianfranco Ferre and Iris Pudra by Frederic Moll but ultimately the overall smell is done a bit differently and it goes without saying that comparison Comparisons are always going to happen nowadays, but ultimately this is a very warm and addictive scent. It's a little bit on the wispy side, but it's done with such elegance and such class. I really love the rose and the iris. I mean, I would really recommend that you get your nose on this one. Always sample before you buy though, because scent is subjective. In terms of the longevity, four to five hours projection on this one. I got within an elbow's length, I wanna say it projected really well for the first two to two and a half hours. Right around the three and a half to four hour mark is where it started to sit a bit closer to the skin, but my wife noticed this one on me, so I might have become an osmic to it, but other people around you can still smell it. But I do think that given the price, the discounted price of this one on Max Roma, it's worth the buy. In terms of the versatility, I do think that it's compromised somewhat, just because I can only see this one being worn in the hotter weather unless you're going to wear it in a climate controlled environment then you can wear it indoor any season you want but if you live in a more tropical climate this one is perfect for you so now i must caution you there are a lot of websites online that are saying that this is a feminine fragrance i personally don't pick up on that sure there are other fragrances from the shooting stars collection that i would go as far as considering feminine but not this one i think that this one could very comfortably be pulled off by a guy and heck a lot of guys from the middle east wear rose on a regular basis and so i don't 
find anything about this one explicitly feminine. If anything, I find it perfectly unisex. And I think that this one, given the price, should be worn for dressed up occasions. This is not the kind of fragrance that I would wear when I'm running errands, grocery shopping, dropping my kids off at daycare, what have you. And last up, we have the presentation. I really do think that Zerjoff and a lot of the brands that fall under the Zerjoff universe really go above and beyond in procuring a really beautiful, thorough, and detailed presentation with a lot of attention to detail. So my final verdict on this one is if you're buying it for the iris note, don't. There's another fragrance from the house of Zerjoff called Iris. That one has a bit more of a starchy iris that I think will be to your liking. If you're buying this one because you heard through the grapevine that Zerjoff performs really well, this one is one of the more subtle and intimate types of scents from the brand. And so I would recommend that you purchase Gao or Najaf. If you're into the animalic stuff, those are the real heavy hitters from the brand or More Than Words, my goodness. More Than Words is one of the best performers in my entire collection if not the best. But if you're gonna buy this one because of the interplay of the different ingredients, the subtle sensuality that it kind of conveys with it, the sort of understated elegance that you're gonna get from it, I think that this is an awesome buy. And better yet, if you can buy it from Max Aroma by using the code RedEllessence and get 30% off, which is gonna knock it down to $151, I think that's an even better deal. So there you have it. That was my review on Lua by Zerjoff. I really enjoyed this one. It's not my favorite shooting star fragrance, but it's one that I'm definitely gonna be wearing a lot more in the summer months. To be honest with you guys, I really like the winter Zerjoff fragrances. Those are the ones that get the most play from me, like More Than Words and Mom Love and I can name a bunch. So thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review on Lua by Zerjoff. As suggested in the title, there is gonna be a giveaway attached to this fragrance. I'm actually gonna be giving away an official sample of this fragrance as well as many other fragrances from the Zerjoff brand so you can pretty much experience the line for yourself. All you need to do to enter that giveaway is leave one comment down below with which Zerjoff fragrance is your favorite. And also, if you haven't tried them, which one piques your interest the most based off of the reviews that you've seen online. If you're new to this channel, I would love it if you could support this channel only if you took something of value from this video. It's free and it's easy. All you need to do is click that red subscribe button in the corner and this way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads and of course that includes reviews just like this one, top 10 fragrances videos, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, and a whole lot more. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys. We'll see you next time.